Something just rolled in the yard and uh, it's gonna take some hands and some big equipment. So all hands on deck, fire up the loader. Let's go do some unloading and then assembly. here is an 85 foot Mandaco Land Roller. Now, if you guys have seen, you probably remember on the channel I've seen occasionally, we have a 50 foot Mandaco Land Roller. It's a lime green color. And we've been using that for a number of years. We bought that about five years ago, something like that. Great Land Roller, never had a problem with it. But Mandaco, because we run one of theirs, said, well, would you like to try a bigger one out? So we said, yeah, that'd be cool to try it. But they said, you gotta have a big tractor to pull it because, well, it's, it's a little bigger. It's 85 feet. And, uh, <laughs> You know, we knew it was big, but when it pulled up on that truck and we started unloading, it is heavy. There's a lot of iron on this thing. These are heavy. They are thick. So, this year, we'll be rolling all of our peas, and maybe even some more, depending on what we want to decide we want to do, with this 85-foot land roller, and hopefully get some acres done. So Wiggles, the Wiggly Wagster Likester, Snake Tamer, that guy, he, uh, he's going to get a chance to run the bud on the 85-foot land roller. Now, we... <laughs> We're gonna be using our KTA 525 Big Bud. This is a Series 2, weighs about 48,000 pounds. We'll have this pull the land roller because it needs a big tractor. They said like lowest to the bottom, like 300 horsepower is the lowest you wanna go with pulling something like that. It's more the weight than it is the horsepower. And I took this out and got it kind of dialing and tested it out. And it'll walk this tractor if you're not careful. It'll push the back end around. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting experience. There's just a lot of iron back there and there's probably just not enough iron right here. So it's gonna be fun. We'll get to it, but you guys will be seeing some footage soon of this. And then when we get done with the rolling all the peas, we might do some rolling of our spring wheat ground. We haven't sure yet. It'd be nice to do the whole farm because then when harvest comes and we have a short crop, if we do, you're not banging headers up. So thank you, Mandaco. We'll give that a run. This tractor though, don't worry guys, is gonna see an air drill this year. It's definitely gonna be doing some seeding, a lot of seeding. We got a lot of acres left. So when we're done with the Steiger, with the hours that we have on it um, available, we'll switch over and then that'll disconnect from the land roller, jump on the air drill, and it'll get to join the other big bud in the fields. So let's get to some work, let's go. Just climbed in the cab, first time with the 700, hooked up to the 700. This is a Pro 700, that's a 700 toolbar. And it just now saw the toolbar, so that's a first for us. So I gotta figure out what's going on here and get her all dialed in. Looks like somebody wanted to throw a wrench in our operation. Oh, that's a glorious sight, look at that. Oh yeah, wow. There we go, she's parked for now. We got more to do to it, but a big chunk is done. And that was a good feeling typing in 70 feet in that thing, 840 inches. Last we had was 57 feet in that monitor. It's a good upgrade, all right. I think we're doing some seed cleaning. Let's get to that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish cleaning the rest of our peas. We have about 2,500, 1,500 or so in a bin and about a thousand in a truck. 
Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get it out here and uh, finish that job up because I think we can start putting them in the ground now. Easy peasy, isn't it? I've had peas sitting on this truck for a couple weeks now. It's time to get them off. We're gonna clean them, get them ready for seed. Then we gotta clean some barley. We'll get the peas done first. We didn't finish it all the first time, which is good because we did some upgrades to the, upgrades to the cleaner. Then we'll get to test it again, which is really nice. Since we got the tandems out here, they've been freshly upgraded with new uh, hinge bins. We'll use these for the clean seed. I think we're set. Let's fire her up. Get the rest of these piece cleaned. Oh yeah. Cause we could be in the ground right now. I absolutely could. I don't know if insurance is like that, but it's ready out there. all put together awesome and uh, they're cleaning some peas but to stay ahead of the game I'm gonna go ahead and take this magnum bring it over to the Quonset grab the VR 12 grain back and then go over to a bin over here and we can uh, pull out the peas that are in that bit bin and clean those as well so let's go get that VR 12 rim and uh, Stay busy. Easy. I love it. When I can stay in the tractor and I can just back up and they can uh, finesse it and get it all hooked up and I can drive out. Maybe that's making me lazy or a millennial. Probably a bit of both, but I love it. That thing's running like a champ. We decided to try that cleaner on some barley because we've got a bunch of barley we'd like to seed from last year's crop and it's got some stuff that needs to come out. But we didn't have the right screens. So I stopped by a place nearby that does a lot of cleaning and they gave me the screen that they thought was best for that barley. So I'm gonna take some of the old screens and a bunch of flat iron that I bought and I'm gonna fab up some new screen backs and then I'll put them in there, make her work. So let's fab her up.
There we go. What do you think? I a little yellow paint. Now you can look just like these. Cool. Well, hopefully they fit. I think everything measured out are okay. So that's the sifter for the bottom of the scalper. If that makes sense. On the bottom. So the really fines are gonna go through there. The barley will float across that, the good barley. The really small fine barley will fall through those slots. So as hopefully other seeds that we don't want. And then uh, we'll hopefully get a nice sample off that. So I didn't need a top screen because, well, I can just use those for the top because the barley will easily fall through that. So we'll get her going, figure this out, clean some barley. Okay, we finished the peas, got it all on the trucks. Um, we do have two truck trailers available. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean our barley. Uh, Nick went down and got some screens uh, that we can put in, uh, in the double scalper uh, so that we can uh, separate out what we want and we're gonna see how well that works. So that's coming up. Um, we barley know what we're doing. Good morning, everybody. We're gonna clean some barley today. Oh yeah, it's a little cold out. Uh, <laughs> this old 454 Chevy pickup is not running very good. Uh, our fault, usually runs pretty good. We accidentally, in a series of unfortunate events, mixed a little bit of diesel and some gasoline. Not a lot, a little bit. And we didn't want to throw the gas out because you know what the price of gas and diesel is these days. And so it's like, this is the beater truck. Just put it in there and run it, burn it. Cleans that throttle body out. I know, you guys are all about that. So anyways, who needs fuel additives and just puts a little diesel in your gas? <laughs> so, it's popping and hitting and running great. It's okay, we'll get the job done. update on my chest situation talked to another surgeon pretty much he said yeah I've got a partial tear and I just got to take it easy in three to four months and some therapy and rest and you know treating it right I should be back to normal again so praise the Lord I'm happy about that that's good and he wasn't too concerned about my rotator cuff because he said that that probably was a false reading so that's good too so yes I'll be okay thanks guys we're cleaning we got barley. He's doing a pretty good job, but we need a screen on the top that's a little bit smaller. Basically, we got too small and too big. We need that middle. Otherwise, what's going on is we're kicking a couple of the big items uh, out, and it should be. It should be got going out here. But we are taking care of all of our Canadian thistle. Yeah, right there, we don't like that stuff. So we're catching all that. That's good, as well as any rocks. Oats? I don't know. There could be some oats get through. It's kind of hard to tell. We're running this air screen as much as we can. We don't mind if we get some extra loss on this. We're going to put it back in the bin. So, all the stuff that's going up, that's fine. It's going to go back in the grain bin. So we got our air screen going pretty hard, and there's quite a bit blown over. We're trying to get all the oats out as we can, because they're a little bit lighter than barley. So, it's working. I want to see how much came out of about a thousand bushels of barley. There. That is oats and uh, all kinds of other goodies that we don't want. And that's the clean sample over there. First load of barley going over into one of those meridian bins that we have. One of the smooth wall bins. So we have two different types of smooth wall bins over there. We have West Steel bins and we have meridian bins. And those are our fertilizer bins, but since we don't have fertilizer in them, and they're easy to open up the top, put them in those real quick, so. 